You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Root trans for our Black and White Sports too. Well, Pete Carroll had certainly came out and made some interesting comments. He just came out in the last hour or so in regards to Geno Smith. And in praising Geno Smith, it's pretty clear. He took a real shot at Russell Wilson. Uh, Very, very much uh, relaying the fact that he felt like maybe Russell wasn't a team player. That, that, That Russell wasn't open to new ideas, trying different things, and molding himself around what Pete Carroll and John Snyder, I guess, envisioned. Uh, that they wanted out of their franchise quarterback. As we know, Geno Smith has had a career renaissance, unlike we have not seen since. I compared it to Alex Smith hooking up with Jim Harbaugh uh, because people forget Alex was a full-blown bust, a full-blown bust. Uh, And then he got with Jim Harbaugh, and he had between Harbaugh and Andy Reid about five to six really good years Later on in his career, the other one you could draw comparisons to, and by the end of the season, we may be thinking about this comparison more. Rich Gannon, who turned into a monster in the last three or four years of his career, I think even he won an MVP. Well, look, depending on how hurt Josh Allen is right now, we have to start bringing it up with Geno. Comeback player of the year? I think that's almost a no-doubter at this point. But uh, Pete Carroll's come out and made some comments. My God, Geno Smith's got 15 touchdowns and four picks and leads the league in completion percentage, over 2,000 yards passing. And I've heard on some um, various podcasts lately that, look, they some people on the coaching staff, when he was in the in, with the New York Giants, saw this. That they saw this, and they met, they benched Eli. They wanted to see what Geno would do, and there was so much blowback over Eli Manning being benched that they abandoned. They abandoned it, but they believed in New York with the Giants. Geno could succeed then. Interesting. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, now Geno's thirty-two. You kind of got to wonder what if. Pete Carroll praises Geno Smith amid Seahawks success, makes subtle dig over past resistance. I don't know if it's all that damn subtle, to be honest with you. I think he's making it pretty clear what he thinks of his former quarterback. The Seattle Seahawks are defying the odds with Geno Smith this year, and Pete Carroll may have taken the opportunity to take a veiled shot at former quarterback Russell Wilson. I don't think it's like I said. I don't think think it's that. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's that subtle. I really don't. I mean, it's pretty clear he's only had one other franchise quarterback, and he's making it clear he wasn't open to trying new things. He wasn't open to molding himself around what the Seahawks really wanted to do. It's crazy. Fresh off a four-game win streak. Carroll spoke highly of the working relationship between Smith and offensive coordinator Shane Waldron and the trust the two have built on the field, especially in critical plays. Quote, he's getting everything he can out of Shane, Carroll said on KIOR AM radio. That's a really important part of it. Shane helps him all the way through to the 15-second point. They're just communicating to get it done, and there's conversation that goes on. So they work it out. Geno's taking advantage of all that. Carroll went on to elaborate further, noting that Smith wears a wristband to help him with play calling decisions, something that was met with, quote, resistance in the past. If you notice, Geno's going off the wristband, and that's a big help. It smoothed things out, sped things up, and cleaned things up. And that's part of it, too. We never did that before. There was resistance to that. So we didn't do that before. He's just telling you. Russell Wilson refused to do it. He continued, when Shane says something to Geno, he's not doubting it. 
So that's telling you right there, Russell Wilson was pushing back on Pete Carroll and the coaching staff. He's just going with it. So there's a real immediate flow that accelerates all the process. He's functioning really comfortably, regardless of what the circumstances are. It's unclear if the resistance came from longtime quarterback Russell Wilson. I think it's pretty clear. But it wouldn't be far-fetched considering the rumored tension that was reported in the months leading up to the massive trade with the Denver Broncos. I think it was a lot longer than months. I think it was the last couple of years at the minimum. Wilson spoke publicly about his frustrations. In February 2021, he spoke openly about, quote, getting hit too much. That's right. He threw his offensive line under the bus, which the Seahawks were reportedly not pleased with. The eventual breakup put both the organization and Wilson under the microscope this season, with the latter seemingly struggling in a new environment, the Broncos narrowly defeated the Jaguars on Sunday to improve to 3-5, and five, but Carroll seemed happy with Seattle's current decision. Geno's fully functioning. He's fully functioning right now. That's the understatement of, of the year. You know, I mean, it looked like Josh Allen was headed towards the MVP, but now that he's hurt, you got to wonder if he was to have, let's say, two, three, four lesser games in a row because of that injury. Could Geno actually jump out there and win the most valuable player in the NFL? It would be, I, I think it would be one of the best stories we've seen in a very, uh, very long time uh, in the in the league. And we've covered Russell Wilson a lot. You know, unfortunately for Russell, he's done a hell of a lot of really cringy things. And when it seems like a player is not team oriented he's not in lockstep with his coach um i don't care for that kind of player very much i never have um i'm i'm a big tom brady fan so and we've seen the things that tom's done over the years to try to get his you know consume everything involving his coaches his teammates and doing what he what he has to do to try to get better and um so between that and cringy subway commercials and the fact that We've heard there's a massive ego problem involving uh, Russell Wilson, which has come out in social media, I think, a lot. Um, it's unbelievable. I'm a 49ers fan. Seahawks kind of worry me right now in that division. They really do. They look like a damn good football team, you know? And with the Rams, the Bucks, and the Packers all down right now, I'm not sure the Seahawks can't make the NFC championship game or even the Super Bowl. And that was, you know, that was not even part of the equation, but that defense is playing better than we expected. And Kenneth Walker, uh, Kenneth Walker is, looks like an all world running back. He truly does. And I brought this up to matrix the other day. It's about time. We start talking about Pete Carroll as one of the greatest coaches we've ever seen. I mean, truly, because he's been to two Super Bowls, he won one, and he also won a national championship in college with USC. How often can you say that about a coach? Winning, winning one in, in college and then winning the Super Bowl, it just really doesn't happen. The games are too different. The culture's too different. And Pete Carroll could handle both. That's a big deal, I think. Yeah, Pete Carroll needs some real credit these days, I think. Peace, I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.